picture I'm going to pass around is my graduation picture from 1968. All right. 40 years. Wow, look nice at that kid. Picture. What happened? It's hard to believe that I got just this way in 40 years. Um, in the 40 years, I've done a lot of things, a lot of traveling, a lot of this, a lot of that. Um, if I look back at it now, some of it was magic and some of it was tragic, and I've had a pretty good 40 years all the way. In my speech, the first, our first speech was on my dad, my significant. The reason I talked about my dad in my speech is because when I came back from Vietnam, I had a real hard time adjusting. In the World War II, Betty was there for me. Um, I spent a lot of time in VA hospitals. I couldn't sleep in a house. I'd sneak out at night laying in bushes. It was bad. So all through that, my dad was there talking. You know, in my speech, I told you how he'd take me to work with him. You know, and he kept a real close eye on me. He was always there for me. I don't think too many people have ever had a loving person like that in their life. Every day, day in and day out. So that was my first speech, and you know, to this day, I still think of him. In my travels of 40 years, I wrote a lot of poetry. Uh, some was published. A poem I wrote for my dad over at all was, Old man, I see the lines of time around your eyes, and your hair has been kissed with snow, and yet your smile still holds that kindness I learned to love so. Old man, you've got more yesterdays than you do tomorrows. And your brows are hanging low. Yet you have something a young can't have. You grew wisdom as you grew old. I wrote that for my father. The second speech was the guitar. I played it since I was five years old. I've traveled around uh, in this crazy life of the 40 years. I used to play on street corners for nickels and dimes. I loved it. Sometimes I'd make $40, $60 a day, buy my beer, couple of joints, I'm good for the next day. <laughs> it brought me through the Haight-Ashbury district in the 70s in and, and San Francisco. People like Janis Joplin, Chris Christopherson, they're all playing on the street corners with me. I've met them. Very, very hard times, good times, bad times, but it was all life. We have to learn somewhere, somehow. We have to know good and bad to know the difference. So the guitar has always been special to me, and as I tried to, in the speech, I tried to show you just a few basic chords, how you can learn to play the guitar by going on line and getting those little dots like I showed you on the neck of the guitar. If you start putting your fingers there and go from there to the, what you want to learn. And it's wide open, very easy. The third speech I had was on Lady Astor and Booker T. Washington. Two completely different people, and yet they had that bond. Booker T. Washington was a very simple man from the South, black man, ends up going to Princeton University. Lady Astor was forced into um, politics in Britain, and she was kind of a radical, <laughs> as the speech would say. She was quite a character, and I'm sure she wasn't one of Winston Churchill's favorite people. The fourth, the fourth speech is why you would hire me. Of all the years I've painted in the Union, I've been to all these trade schools, several of them. I mean, I just papers after papers after papers. I painted everything from helicopters to assholes on hobby horses, which is a real true story. And um, Portland, Oregon is one of the biggest carousel companies in the world. One time I was laid off, and this friend of mine says, hey, let's go down there and paint these hobby horses. You can match paint. I said, sure. And it was a fantastic job. The carvings were made in the 1800s on these horses, all hand carved, master carvers. And they'd re-putty them and rebuild them, we'd sand them down. Then I'd have to go in there and match all the paint and touch them up. So they go back on the carousel rides. Some of the animals in there were worth over a million dollars. Any animal on this guy's carousel rides, was, you could buy a Mercedes for at the time. So I could paint anything from the hobby horses to helicopters. Speech five was given on a makeup speech on a Phil's 11 o'clock class. You people weren't here. It was a speech critique where we each made up three speeches. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit on that speech because I think the importance of it is worth it. The speech I, I spoke was alcohol awareness. Uh, Cassandra Miller Starks gave the speech. And what I'm going to be quoting from, there will be some quotes coming up, will be from the uh, National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Addiction pamphlet. Two to three percent of college students will die this year in alcohol-related accidents. Although that number is small, it is alarming because it is on the uprise. 
A lot of it has to do with binge drinking, the party, and puking in the bushes, falling off the steps, off the balconies. No matter, you're dead. Alcohol's related. We have 13 million alcoholics in the United States. If you think about that, that's just what we know of. That's the people that have been in trouble with courts, that's the people that's been to drunk schools, wherever. Some way to keep a record of you. There's a lot more out there that we don't know about. If there's 13 million, just think of all the lives 13 million people touch. Uncles, fathers, brothers, husbands, wives, mom, you know, it touches everybody. Everybody in here knows an alcoholic. You know me. Four points, is there? She brought up four points. What is alcoholism? Is it a disease? Is it hereditary? Can it be cured? Alcoholism is a craving. It can be a, a need. You might wake up shaky, have to drink to get through the next day. That would be the extreme nightmares, blackouts. That's alcoholism. Is it a disease? The National Institution of Alcohol Abuse and Drugs say yes it is. It is a disease. The reason it's not a recognized disease is because if it was a recognized disease and people would be eligible for um, federal government money, state money, because it's a disease. So they're not going to you know, say, hey, you got a disease, here's a check. That ain't going to happen like that. Is it hereditary? Yes, it is hereditary. Just like cocaine and every other drug, alcohol is hereditary. How much do I have to drink to be an alcoholic? Well, I don't know. I worked on it for a lot of years. Um, they say if you take a drink of wine a day, every day, the rest of your life, you'll be an alcoholic. I don't really agree with that, but that's what their sticks say. Can it be cured? No, it can't. An alcoholic that doesn't drink, if he starts drinking again, he's right back where he started from within a day or two. There's just a regression thing. It's, it's a slide. There's no way of curing it. The next one, next speech was me and my buddy Jenny. Me and little Jenny. We wrote about music, album covers, and this type of thing. The reason I ever go with music again, because it's been a part of my life for a long time. In that speech, uh, I showed you some album covers, of course, here we go again, the 60s, the late 60s, early 70s, back in my hate ashbury district, back in the rebel days. I think uh, through all the 40 years that we're talking about in between this gap and these speeches, music has, has the greatest thing. I mean, the changes in the things I've learned from music. Number one, Otis Redding, we've all heard sitting on the dock of the bay. Do you know the man never heard his record player? He never heard it. He was killed in a plane wreck the day after he recorded it, flying out of San Francisco. So these are people that were very important to me. In that era, I was writing songs like, uh, Well, America, how are you, dear? Do you remember me? I'm the one that you couldn't form into society. I hate your car, your bar, your war, your world. It's a trip. And all I ever asked was a chance to be hip. So take your capitalistic weight and shove them up your ass. I live out here in the country and raise my own grass. And whatever happened to that thing you call democracy? Every time I turn around, you put the screws to me. Well, America, I love you, dear, but I really got to go. I'm not going to stand here and watch the final curtain on your show. These are songs I've written. I've written a lot of songs. Some are published, some aren't. Just like the poetry I wrote for A Book of Dreams. In Northern California, we had poetry classes we'd all go to, get stoned and hang out <laughs> and write poetry. That's what it was. So I did a lot of writing. We were working on what they called a Book of Dreams. And I wrote about ten poems for that. So as I leave you today on my final speech, I wrote a poem for the class it's called Remembering You. Where clear blue skies of tomorrow will meet dark green oceans of today, in my mind your memories will remain as silver waves that'll slowly and gently return to golden sands of yesterday. Yes, I'll remember you. <laughs>